Emil Haddad is changing California's landscape, literally. In San Francisco, he's transforming a former shipyard in the old Candlestick Park. He's building thousands of homes at Irvine's Great Park and just opened a state-of-the-art sports complex there. Now he's embarking on an even more ambitious project, the eco-friendly Newhall Ranch development in northern L.A. County. He just took over as chairman of USC's prestigious real estate center. It's the American dream, because Emil Haddad's story begins in war-torn Lebanon. Surviving that taught him lessons he uses every day. He's here to discuss all that. Oh, and to talk about whether Amazon might fit into his plans. Emil Haddad, right now on Inside OC. Inside OC is brought to you by... Each new community Five Point brings to life represents a promise delivered. Great neighborhoods are more than just places to live. They are places to connect. Five Point is a proud sponsor of public television and community programming. Memorial Care is transforming the way healthcare is delivered, keeping our communities and businesses healthy by guiding them on the path to wellness with easily accessible hospitals, physician offices, and outpatient centers. Memorial Care, leading the way. First community in the world that can do something like that. Wow, wow. Well, hi, I'm Rick Reef, and I'm talking with Emil Haddad. Emil, great to have you on. And uh, let, uh, what a year, what a year this has been for you. Let, let me just go through a couple of things here. Uh, you, you went public, Five Point Holdings went public. Uh, market value, uh, stock market value is like $2 billion. Uh, uh, and that was the, uh, a, after the end of a long process of, uh, of many struggles over the years. You go public, uh, and then uh, New Hall Ranch, that huge development near Magic Mountain in Santa Clarita, uh, got key go-aheads from L.A. County, which now is going to uh, allow you to proceed on that project, 20,000 homes, a mammoth project. In the Great Park in Irvine, you've got the uh, state-of-the-art sports complex. You did a land swap that will allow you to do more development and also paves the way for a veteran cemetery. Uh, you've got Broadcom moving from Mr. Donald Bren's uh, territory to your territory at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, at the Great Park. Uh, on a personal note, you took over the Lusk School. I mentioned that, prestigious real estate school. You're now the chairman there after having served as chairman of the UCI Foundation. And finally, you get the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. So what else? What did I miss this year? I don't think you missed anything. I okay, all right. So you had this big year, and we're going to talk about a lot of that. But first, let's talk about a couple things in the news. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing, Amazon. Amazon is going to build a second headquarters, employ about 50,000 people, and all of the development centers around the, uh, around the country are bidding for this. And here in Irvine, uh, Donald Bren of the Irvine Company said he's interested. So my question for you is, uh, you know, how do you fit in to, to this picture, and are you interested in going after Amazon? So how do we fit in this picture? We, um we're a partner of the state of California, and we are involved in more than just uh, Irvine, as you said. So we are being, uh, or we're playing a big role in the Bay Area, in the uh, proposal that's gonna go from the Bay Area to Amazon. Uh, we own uh, about 20,000 home sites over there and about uh, five, six million square feet of commercial, so obviously our land could accommodate. Uh, we are also part of the Los Angeles proposal with New Hall Ranch with 21,000 homes and 11 and a half million square feet of commercial. And, you know, we're very excited that, uh, that Mr. Bren came out and put Irvine at the same level as New oh, York okay, and San so Francisco. Okay, so that's interesting. So it's not like you don't call Bezos and Bren doesn't call Bezos. It's the cities that are working with, yeah. uh, I, I don't know who calls Bezos. I, I, I haven't called them. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, uh, the owner yeah. of Amazon. Yeah, right. no, uh, we are working with our public partners, uh -huh. uh, the cities and the agencies that are putting together uh, the proposal. We will be doing the same thing here. We will be working with the Irvine company, with the city of Irvine, 
And I assume that there's going to be a larger group of people, regional groups, public and private, that will be part okay. of this. So if, let's say, if, uh, if Jeff Bezos says, I kind of like the San Francisco proposal, then they may look and it could be your site, it could be somebody else's site. Is that how it's going to work? It could, although in San Francisco, nobody else has the critical mass. Okay. Because you have to remember, what I think Amazon is going to have to look at is not only the 8 million square feet, ultimately, of space, but they're going to have 50,000 employees, which means they're going to have to have a plan to house people. That's mm -hmm. about 20 to 25,000 homes. And then the other thing that I think is very critical for Amazon or any company today that is in the new economy uh, world is that they're going to have to find a place where there's the right lifestyle that's going to attract employees. Mm -hmm. Today, Silicon Valley is challenged because people don't want to go down there because the lifestyle is not that what they want. They want to be in San Francisco. So you sort of have to find a way to triangulate this between housing, the office space, and the lifestyle. And in San Francisco, honestly, we're the only ones who have that critical mass. OK, now in Irvine, it could be, uh, do you have the capability? We do. we do. We have the capability on our own. I assume the Irvine company does. Uh, the county has some land, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the way this is going to end up coming together is collaboration mm -hmm. between all of us because, you know, for us, we want it to be California, obviously. Uh, we would love to have it be Irvine, but we would love it to be San Francisco and L.A. as well. Uh, but this is going to require all of us to come together to make this thing yeah. a successful bit. Now, New Hall Ranch. New Hall Ranch is, uh, and for years and years, and of course, as you know, and we'll get into it later, there are still some people who don't want anything to happen, and I'm sure you'll have more lawsuits before this is all over. Um, there, you've got a blank slate, yes. and you're, you've been thinking about 20,000 homes or so, right? Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't have the crystal ball to think about Amazon when we thought about 21,000 homes. I don't think Amazon... But is there a is selling it? point to be made at New there Hall is. Ranch? There is. And, I and mean, what is it? If you were going to make the pitch about why Amazon should go to New Hall Ranch, what, what would it be? Well, New Hall fits all the criteria that was put out by Amazon in terms of uh, a location. Uh, we obviously are entitled for 11.5 million square feet of commercial. That's more than the 8 million. It also could be a distribution center for Amazon because of the central location to the Central Valley, to Los Angeles, Orange County, and the Antelope Valley. Um, and we have approvals for 21,500 homes, which could you know, accommodate the housing. And we're right on the 5 freeway, which is the artery of commerce that, that connects Mexico to Canada. So it has all the attributes. And the proximity to LA gives it the universities that they're looking for and, and all that. Okay, so, um, you're, so you've, got, uh, you've got a few irons in the fire here throughout California. All right, so let me get to the other point on Amazon, which is that, as you know, there are many folks who say they're not gonna go to, Amazon's not going to California. It's business unfriendly, the taxes are high, and on most of the, you know, the smart betting online, if you go, you look at the stories, people predicting, some, some don't even have California in the picture. How do you feel about it? Is California probably a non-starter? I don't know. I mean, I can't get in the mind of, uh, of Amazon's leadership. Uh, we are a huge believer in, in California. I mean, this is where uh, things that are changing the world are coming out of California. Uh, and if you really want to be in a place where you can tap into great research universities, lifestyle, the concentration of the talent, then California would stack up at the top of the list. Uh, is it unfriendly to business? The answer is yes. Do we have challenges? Of course we do. Uh, if, you, if Amazon decides to pick a side that's going to require a SQL lawsuit or SQL process, is that going to be a process that's going to be a lengthy process? The answer is yes. Is that going to chill Amazon? Probably yes. Yeah. So CEQA is the California environmental it's a uh, California, regulations. Exactly. So there's a lot of challenges that California has, but, but California provides also a lot of opportunities that are very unique. And I don't think any other place in the world can match some of those opportunities. Okay. Let's talk about another news item, which kind of dovetails with this or almost opposes this, and that's a no-growth initiative. That could put a kibosh on a lot of things, uh, including Amazon, I'm, I'm assuming. But in Irvine, rather surprising, because this isn't the kind of thing people have normally associated with Irvine, there is now underfoot a movement for a no-growth initiative that basically would stop 
uh, any kind of sizable housing or commercial development. What's that about? Look, I mean, we, we're still trying to get into the specifics of the initiative and what it means and all that, mm -hmm. and I don't have all those answers. Yes, I have people who are working on that uh, mm -hmm. to figure out what that all means. But in general, I will tell you, I don't know that initiatives uh, that stop growth is the answer. It's typically a reaction to a situation that frustrates people. Uh, traffic is one of them. But I think we have to remember that Irvine is probably the best city that was master planned in the world. And because of that, Irvine really has a lot of things going for it in terms of capacity and things like that. Now, in the last probably several years, I think the approval process in Irvine got away from the master planning concept, and we started do, seeing things more piecemeal. So my hope is that this will be a wake-up call for Irvine to go back to the foundation of master planning, which the Irvine company really was the one that laid that out, not only for Irvine, but I think they basically laid out the concept yeah. uh, globally. Uh, and I'm hoping that this will be nothing more than a wake-up call so we can start addressing things proactively rather than reactively. Well, as you were speaking, we showed a picture of traffic, uh, a, a picture from the Orange County Register, which, thank you, provides a lot of the photos for this show, but it showed a traffic jam at, at University Drive in Culver, and it's a scene you see every day now. And, and uh, just as you know, in, in the last five years even, it's gotten dramatically worse. And don't you think a lot of people just look and say, I've had it with this traffic, I'm fed up with this, and I'm, I don't want any more development. I think, look, I think traffic is frustrating. There's a lot of things that frustrate us. Um, but I think if you look at the traffic in Irvine and compare it to traffic in other places in the country or the world, it's still very tolerable. That doesn't mean that Imam likes to you know, stand at a red light for a long time. But I think no growth stops a lot more than just you know, traffic. You have jobs creation. You have a generation today that, that wants to live in Orange County, but they cannot live in Orange County because of affordability and you're pushing them away. So these are not the right answers. And let me just tell you my view on, on traffic long term, because what we're talking about uh, are initiatives that are going to be decades, uh, or we're going to have to live with them for decades. The driver's car is around the corner. It's going to happen. And once we get to that technology becoming practically applicable, uh, a lot of the traffic noise is going to go away. Traffic so issues. Because, because when you have cars that are driving right. you know, a few inches away from each other right. on both sides, you're going to create a lot of capacity. Now, I know people will say, well, that's years down the road. But so are initiatives. When you put them in place, you're going to have to live with them for decades. Uh, Ventura went through one of those uh, 30 yeah. years ago. So what happens if this no growth initiative goes in? Are you already entitled and can do things, or will it impact what, what you're doing and what the Irvine company is doing. Again, I mean, uh, we know that we have a development agreement. We know that we're protected. Uh, there's a lot of claims being made by the initiative about certain things that could be redone. I mean, I think one of them is the cemetery itself. Mm -hmm. uh, this but, veteran but, cemetery. Yeah, but I, the, I am not in a position part. to comment on it yeah. because we haven't finished the analysis on it. But we're protected. What we have is what we have. Uh, but that's not the way I should look at it. I shouldn't look at, I have it, so I don't care. I think we need to really think about uh, what this means to the whole area in terms of not, not housing only, but yeah. jobs and everything else. On a else. scale from one to 10, how worried are you about this initiative? Uh, I, I'm not worried, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I hope that the residents of Irvine are much more educated and much smarter than to simply have an answer say, the answer to traffic is to shut everything down. Uh, this is a this is a, a market that is a much yeah. more uh, I th clever yeah. than that. I thought it was interesting. I think one of the things about the initiative is it would also prevent the widening of a, of like jamboree or something. So it's like, well, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't even uh, improve the traffic situation. Well, look, so. I, I, California has a huge housing crisis today. That even the governor and everybody in Sacramento is now speaking about it. And you can't just simply say we have a housing crisis. And the way we're going to answer it is to shut everything down. Mm -hmm. You're starting to see now movements that counter the NIMBY movements, not in my backyard, that are yes in my backyard movements. So there's a lot of awareness today 
But the answer is not simply okay. to shut everything down. And that's, I think, what's going to win. All right. Well, that makes a nice segue up to talk about New Hall Ranch, which is one of those new approaches that you want to take. And uh, you've, you've survived the court challenge. You've gotten the approvals from the county. There are still, as you know, some groups out there that are, uh, you know, no doubt going to legally try to stop it, but you're moving ahead. Um, so tell us about New Hall Ranch and some of the ideas that you have, including the fact that you're billing it as zero emissions. Now, I find it hard to believe you can't build something and not have emissions. So explain what's going on with New Hall Ranch. So New Hall Ranch is the continuation of the city of Valencia, which people don't realize that this is basically a continuation of a city that was built by the company over many years. And today we have 20,000 homes and 60,000 jobs in Valencia. Newhall was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2003, and it has been in the legal challenge system since then. 14 um, years, I guess. Yes, 14, 14 years. years of court battle. And we went all the way and won all through the appellate court, and then there was a, an appeal to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court took it on two issues. One was minor, which got fixed very quickly. But the bigger issue was a greenhouse gas emission. And the issue wasn't that we didn't do what we needed to do. The issue had to do with the fact that when we did our analysis, the standards in the state itself were different standards. And the governor has now taken a position of leadership in terms of greenhouse gas emission. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, came out with its ruling the day that the Paris conference was taking place with President Obama and Governor Brown. And it simply wanted us to go and uh, do more analysis to demonstrate that we're carrying more than our fair share. We looked at that as an opportunity and uh, realized that the world of global warming is real. So we decided to see if we can build the first community of its size in the whole world that can go to a zero greenhouse gas emission. And we were able to get to that. Uh, how we got to that yeah. is, is actually interesting. Yes, because I wanted to know, how do you build 20,000 homes and a bunch of commercial and not have emissions? The technology is not available for us to mitigate all of that on site. So we, we went all the way uh, based on what the te technology can allow us to do on site. Every home is going to have solar charging stations in every home. We have 2,000 charging stations in the community. 2,000 within the LA County. But then we had to go off-site and we're going to six schools in the LA County area and some of the disadvantaged areas to retrofit them. Uh, we are buying a uh, forest and endowing it to preserve it. We're doing a methane gas capture system for the dairy farms in Central Valley. And most interesting, we're going to Zambia to actually replace cooking stoves over there that, uh, that are actually create a double whammy because they cut the trees and cook and okay. have the emission. So obviously, at least, not, uh, as you say, with existing technology, you can't on-site. New Hall itself will not be zero, but you're doing all these other things to offset. Well, and so it's net, that's why you call that, it net well, look, zero. Greenhouse gas emission is global. It's not regional you know, or, or, uh, or city by city. So if you have an ability to show that you're offsetting whatever you're going to do by mitigating and creating a zero net, then that's what they call a zero uh, net uh, greenhouse gas emission. The state of California came out and certified that that's, a, that's actually a zero net. And we're hoping that this will set a standard for how people will start looking at development going forward. Because this it, it seems issues. a lot less confrontational. I mean, uh, but, but what, what I'm wondering about is how do you do these things? Don't a lot of these things add cost to the project so the homes are more expensive? Well, they, they do add cost, and, and a lot of these things that we end up doing uh, get passed on to the consumer over time. Uh, but for us, I mean, this ended up being a cost of about $2,000 a home. Uh, uh -huh. So when you put it all in the mix, from my perspective, it was the right answer. Okay. And you know, one of the things that we always uh, talk about inside the company is you're either going to recognize change and, and go and be ahead of that, or you're going to ignore change and resist it and find yourself all the time on your heels. And, and in this case, we wanted to be 
uh, part of change. Right, and, and wh while I reference the fact that there are groups that are opposed to this, you also have gotten some groups that normally don't support development to actually approve of this project, right? Yeah, I mean, to the credit uh, of a lot of these environmental movements, uh, because of the fact that we went to a net zero, uh, we had a lot of them show up to the hearings in support, something that you typically don't see. Yeah. And, uh, and they basically were, uh, were uh, advocates of the project. Okay. All right, let's talk about, in Irvine, the Great Park and how that's going along. Uh, tell, us, tell us about that. You're building homes, selling homes right now. Well, we're doing more than homes. I mean, the Great Park is going great, finally. It's, I think people are starting to realize uh, what's going to happen over there. Um, we really are building a community uh, that's much more focused on the social aspect of things, and then that will inform us on the design thing, uh, design aspect. Uh, the, the, as you said, the sports complex, we just opened it. This will be uh, two and a half times Disneyland. Uh, this will be an amenity that will benefit the whole area. I understand that there's a big tournament already scheduled for November where it's going to fill rooms and hotels and it's going to create a lot yeah, of energy. A soccer tournament? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, what yeah talk about just quickly uh, how many soccer fields, tennis courts, all that kind of thing. So all we'll have 24 soccer fields and a soccer stadium, which is all built, 24 tennis courts and a center court. We have seven baseball, four softball. All these fields are, are flex fields, some basketball, and, and a area for play area. But more than the fields and the number of fields, I think, I think I would encourage people to go see how we did it in order for us to be sensitive to mothers who take their kids, for instance, to uh, training or to play soccer and have a younger child who sits there and how we position the playground, for instance, next to that. So there's a lot of, uh, of time that we spend on, uh, on how people actually connect with each other. I was asked, what does the stadium mean to me personally? And it really means a place where people uh, meet each other uh, at a moment of excitement because their kids scored a goal or did something like that, and, and friendships could develop for life. Uh, same reason why we are excited about the amphitheater now. Uh, there are moments in time when people start a relationship that becomes a very long relationship, and those are the venues that we focus on. Yeah. You, it all sounds wonderful and nice, but to get there, you, there's been a lot of politics. There's been a lot of votes, and uh, you, you know, like, how do you handle, how do you handle the, all the, all the politics that, that goes into it? Look, you can't be in our business and not be thick-skinned. And a lot of times, you know, uh, people around you who are working very hard start taking personal. And I, I always tell people, look, you have to filter out the noise and keep on focusing on excellent execution. And if you talk to people within my group, they will tell you that for many years I've been saying, at the end of the day, people will believe what they see, not what they hear. And people can make all type of claims about what we are and what we're not doing. When people go see what we're building over there, not in terms of homes, but in terms of public benefit, mm -hmm. in terms of things that are gonna change people's lives, uh, that's the thing that I think I rely on. Yeah. more than anything else. Now, it requires a lot of patience and thick skin, but at the end of the day, I have no doubt that all that noise and that comes out of the campaigns will subside when people see execution. Well, talk, talking about results and thick skin, we've got 90 seconds. Let's show a couple of pictures. Uh, here, uh, here is you uh, uh, earlier this year on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, ringing the bell, five point goes public. Uh, you had to overcome a lot of adversity there, too, including your major lender, Lehman Brothers, notoriously went bankrupt uh, during the uh, housing recession in the mid-2000s. There were a lot of people that didn't think Five Point was going to survive or that Lennar, your parent at the time, was going to survive. Uh, how did that feel to finally go public? Uh, you know what? It felt great. And uh, we, uh, we have... A is saying at the company that says deliver, delivered as promised. Um, this company came as a result of a lot of broken deals uh, that we had to deal with. Lehman Brothers was the lender on the Great Park. And uh, it took a lot of hard work. And we made a commitment that if people invested with us, we will do whatever we can so they don't lose money. And if people 
depended on us to build something that was promised to them that we will actually deliver it. Uh, so for, for, for me personally, it was a moment of pride, yeah. uh, reflecting back on a lot of the uh, ups and downs. But to be able to stand there and, and look your kids in the eye and look your family in the eye and have them give you the smile that says, I know what you went through, but when all is said and done, you, all, you did what you said you're gonna do, yeah. that means everything. Terrific, Emil. Great as always, and we're going to continue. We're going to have we're going to continue our discussion and have a part two of this interview. But thank you for part one. That's it for now. Thanks again to Emil Haddad. And full disclosure, while it's not the reason he's on this show, Emil is a board member of PBS SoCal, and his company Five Point is a longtime sponsor of Inside OC. You can watch this show and past shows by going to pbsocal.org or rickreef.com. You can also catch our shows and our post-show open mic chatter on YouTube. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Inside OC. Inside OC is brought to you by Each new community Five Point brings to life represents a promise delivered. Great neighborhoods are more than just places to live, they are places to connect. Five Point is a proud sponsor of public television and community programming. Chapman University is a proud sponsor of Inside OC and community programming.